Okay, guys, I believe that we can get started. I uh, see a lot of people joining in yet, so they will just need to catch up as they join because we don't want to wait any longer. So without further ado, uh, thank you all for joining today. My name is Antonia from GS Cloud and welcome to our webinar. We have quite an exci exciting topic for today, data collection and crew tracking in a single solution. Here with me, I have Barbara. So hi, Barbara, are you ready? Hi, Antonia, and hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, and yes, I'm ready, let's get started. Okay, so like I said, today we will be covering a couple of things. We will talk about the data collection and the track benefits behind it. And as always, we would like to show you all this in action through our live demo. And we will also cover Q&A session and we will address any of the questions you might have. So feel you can always uh, leave the question in our Q&A section or in our chat, whatever you prefer, and we will address them in the end. One other thing that I would like to mention is that we will record this webinar as always, and you can then rewatch it if needed and possibly share it with your colleagues to show them how amazing this solution is. So uh, before we get started, we also wanted to ask you a question to see if you are working on some sort of data collection project. And if you do, do you track your collectors so you know where they are or uh, have been in the past? So uh, Barbara, can you please launch the poll? Yes, I can. Uh, here is a very short poll coming your way. Okay, so if you don't mind, please, a couple of questions, just check them so we can see uh, what kind of workflow you have on your end and what's the need behind uh, this kind of solution and what got you actually to, to join this uh, webinar today. We will wait for a few more seconds. A few more seconds and of course we'll, we'll share the results with you. So um, I can see some results starting to come in. Don't be shy. Yeah, it's anonymous, I think, yeah? Yes, it is, of course. So, Always anonymous, so you don't have to worry. About exposing any maybe private information that you, you don't want to share with others. So don't be shy, like Barbara said. OK, let's leave it for a few more seconds. So it's a minute. And there we go. And okay. let's take a look and see our results. OK, so most of you actually answered that you do work. Just a second, let me pull the poll down. Uh, I'm not, no, it's, it's not. I'm okay. not able. OK, you will have to take my word for it. <laughs> we can show you later, maybe. Yeah, so the, the most of you answered that um, you your workflow does include data collection. That's Some perfect. of yeah, that's, that's amazing. Uh, but some of you do need to have an option of actually tracking the field workers as they collect the data. Some of you don't, that's fine as well. Um, the reason behind why you are not tracking them is... Usually it's too complicated. So yeah. today I think we'll show you that it doesn't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So let's close the poll down. <clears throat> okay, so... Let's get started. So we just noticed and seen that all of you actually need the data collection and not just that, but also a need to actually know where your field workers are. Um, there is a lot of reasons why this information is necessary. And of course, Barbara will talk about it a little bit later, but first let's, let's talk about the data collection part of it. Um, there are various reasons why you would need the data collection in your work. You are maybe just starting with a new project, but you don't have any kind of spatial information for it, and your paper maps will just not cut it. Or you, you maybe need to map out the assets to be able to make some conclusions based on that information, or maybe you're just working on a tight schedule and you need to know if your field workers finish the project within a de defined deadline. Um, more importantly, with digital data collection, you are also able to see what data was captured by which collector. So for example, you have a repair team and 
they need to replace uh, traffic signs that are in poor condition. Once they are replaced, they record that information. You don't just know that this work order is finished. You know what team was in charge of it, how much time did it take them to make the repairs, and if there would be any future issues with this, you again have something to refer back to. Data collection can be used not just for mapping current conditions, but also for any future planning as well that can help you during any kind of crisis and provide you a much faster response time, sorry, response time from the teams. And collecting data just for the sake of it doesn't make sense. So what you do with this data, once it's collected, that's what's important. You can actually plan ahead and avoid any kind of potential issues that way. Okay, so with that in mind, what is preventing you from implementing data collection in your, in your workflow? Uh, when we are talking with our clients, the main issue that I hear is that it's hard for them to move from paper to digital. And the main reason behind it, it's too complicated. They don't have any GIS personnel in the house who can actually teach them how to work that expensive equipment. And uh, yeah, one other reason it's that it's too expensive. So <laughs> paper forms then become their main way of collecting data, if you can actually call it that. And what then? You, you fill out your paper forms, try not to lose them while in the field and handling all the equipment and everything else. Then you come back to the office, tired from all the work that you did, you try and find your paper forms. If you are successful, you give them to your office manager, then he needs to retype everything since he needs to have it digitized, map out the approximate location of some sort on a map, hopefully that he will get the location right. And also let's hope he didn't mistype some information from the paper form. And then hit repeat on each field worker and on each day. Well, I don't know about you, but I get tired of just explaining this type of workflow and not to mention all the things that can go wrong during the process. And the most important part, it's not live data. So why is it important to have a hole in one solution for the data collection and how hard it is to actually move from paper to digital? Well, with, with our mobile data collection, it's quite simple, actually. There is no IT or hardware investments, and you can get started in a matter of minutes. Uh, today, everybody has smartphones in their hands or in their pockets, and why wouldn't you utilize that, something that you already have for your GIS needs? Our mobile data collection app enables you to create custom digital forms that you can basically tailor to your needs. and you cannot just collect data, but you can also navigate your point of interest. You can collect photos, you can record audio, you can even use electronic signatures. And if that's not enough, you can also work online in and offline. Um, the data that is being collected, your office manager can actually see back at the office in a matter of seconds. And that's basically the main benefit of it that fast reaction time that enables you to be on top of your projects and your teams. But we actually felt like something was missing from that equation. And what we started to hear that our clients started asking us if there is a way to monitor the, their field workers as well, while they were out there in the field working and collecting the data. So you asked and we delivered. Exactly. Uh, as Antonia said, you asked, we delivered. So that's exactly what you can do with our new GS Cloud Track app. Now, this is a new and improved track app. And what is it, in fact? So it's a cloud-based application that allows you, as it says, to track people, fleet, and assets. So pretty straightforward. Um, and of course, this can be done either by tracking the GNSS unit from your mobile phone, or if you have a dedicated GNSS unit in your vehicle, or maybe some other sensors, or a smart device, um, IoT device. So those are all items and assets that can be tracked. Essentially, you can really get a lot more information than just with the regular, if we can call it that, data collection. And that information can help you, of course, in the decision-making process, can help you optimize your costs. And the key benefit is that it's all in real time. 
We say new and improved uh, because this isn't really something that's completely new thing for us. We've been actually working in the fleet management for over a decade now, really. Um, but the focus was always primarily on vehicles. So anything from like snow plows to fire department vehicles um, to what we have now is, of course, mobile phones. Um, until now, this has mostly been here within Croatia. And the one main thing that was really stopping a lot of um, other users from implementing the solution is that they would need to get a separate GNSS unit, they would need to install it, they would need to know, of course, how to install it, how to make sure that everything is properly connected. Um, and of course, that comes with additional costs. So what we wanted to do in this case is to provide a simpler solution where you don't actually need to have all of those external units, you don't need additional hardware, um, you can actually just take your phone and we can make it do all of the work for you. Existing clients really had a big influence here, actually, um, specifically, as Antonia mentioned, those that have been using mobile data collection in the past because they saw this as a great benefit for them, but they weren't really able to achieve such a solution with what they had on hand. So let's see what's actually new with track application. Um, well, the main thing is that now you don't need the external units. We added the tracking feature to mobile data collection app. So an existing application that is already working well for hundreds of thousands of users um, on our platform. Um, and that it's an application that users already have access to. So we kind of broke that first barrier uh, that the users had. Um, this application is, of course, available for iOS and Android. Um, it's been supported for um, a long time now, um, and it works well on any device that you have. Um, of course, when you're setting up a fleet management solution, that can cost a lot. So you need hardware, the know-how. So the deployment phase was also um, one of the reasons why um, users maybe haven't implemented a tracking solution. Um, of course, there are a number of organizations that companies that use fleet management and it's definitely helping them optimize costs um, it's helping them manage their workforce etc so it's like not like this is a new thing but the key thing is that we are trying to cut the costs down here and instead of you having to invest in hardware you have your phones of course that doesn't mean that we don't support um, other devices, if you have uh, a unit that you would like to use, if you have some additional sensors, you can still take advantage of our track application and in fact, even get more out of it. So what we released, um, apart from uh, just adding the feature to the mobile data collection app, is we, we release a new track web application. So this is um, kind of based on, of course, our, our old one, let's call it like that, but it's fully redesigned uh, with a new user interface and of course improved, um, improved workflow. And we've also included a track mobile application that allows you to basically get the same information, real-time data of where your users are at any time on your phone. So if you're out in the field and need to know this information, you don't have a laptop handy, you have your phone and you can take a look there. Now, before we actually um, switch to the live demo and show you how you can combine your data collection and your tracking, which I know you're all waiting for, um, let's actually see what are the benefits of this kind of system. So why should you even have uh, a solution that enables user tracking? Well, first of all, it's always about safety. So having real-time information on your crews helps you not just inform them or react to things that are happening in the field. Um, it also helps you receive information quicker. Um, you can imagine that you know if you're working in some kind of emergency or disaster management, it's definitely important to know where your team is, not just to ensure their safety, um, whether that's, like it says here, monitoring different weather patterns, or if something happens, you just need to know where they are. 
but apart from that, of course, uh, you can get information on maybe who's the closest one to respond if any new emergency should um, come up. You can actually see here um, our tools in action uh, where unfortunately a real life emergency happened because we had a couple of uh, pretty strong earthquakes here in Croatia a couple of years ago. So lots of destroyed infrastructure. Um, so in essence, our national service, they use our tools not just to document everything, but also to coordinate the rescue teams, uh, coordinate the teams that were cleaning the streets, etc. Or another good example is our fire departments uh, who use our tool to see, for example, where the locations of fire hydrants are so that when they are responding to a fire, they know exactly where to go. And this is of course something that you cannot do without getting real time information because in these cases, it really can be a matter of life and death. The second benefit, and this is maybe more geared towards um, managers. Did we skip one? No, we didn't. Job allocation. Um, this is geared more towards managers. So if you're managing um, crews, if you're managing different contractors that are working on a specific project for you is job validation and in essence answering these questions that we have here. So um, did a certain crew visit the site that they were assigned to? How long were they there? So if um, a certain job takes them to 30 minutes usually and you can see that they've been there for maybe just five or 10 minutes. So that means that maybe they haven't done their job properly. Maybe they were um, cutting corners here. Was the job done on time? How many locations were visited? Um, can you compare this to maybe other, um, other users, other contractors, see how they perform? And of course, um, within guideline insurance, where you can see whether they have accessed any restricted areas, did they follow the driving suggestions? So did they maybe um, get caught speeding? Did they maybe enter any areas that they shouldn't have? Um, in essence, set up different geofencing uh, options. And last but not least, of course, we have cost optimization. Um, that's kind of always the question, how much does something cost? Can we reduce that cost? Um, a couple of examples here. So if you have, um, if you have real time information, you can cut down on your reaction time, you can better optimize your coverage areas, or for example, you can see if there's maybe a way to reduce the fuel cost by either making sure that the users are taking the optimal route or check if they're speeding, because of course we know that driving fast also adds to the fuel consumption. In essence, you just need to make sure that um, the information that you're getting has some kind of value uh, for you. And I think we've seen here that there's definitely value in having this data, definitely value in, have, in tracking users in this way. Um, and having a fleet management or a tracking system, however you want to call it, is a must. Even if you connect it with just one of these bullet points, I think it's worth it. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually show you everything in action. Let's see our data collection and our tracking tool. So Antonia, would you maybe like to get us started? Yeah, let's do it. So as I see in the list of the attendees, a lot of you guys already are using GIS Cloud in some sort of way. So this is probably a familiar page for you. This is our manager page, and of course, this is a place where you manage your organization, but as well access our applications to get started most quickly. So what we wanted to show you is in first segment of the demo, actually how to prepare for the data collection and then how the data collection project is actually connected with our tracking system as well. And for this example, we actually already let's say prepared in advance because uh, we wanted to show you how to record routes and everything else. But of course that's not possible if we are here in the office <laughs> talking to you just now. So um, let me just open the project that we uh, did. So this is our traffic sign inspection project. And I will show you the already 
pre-created survey that we did, but what we wanted to do is also add some additional uh, fields and information that is currently missing from it, just to show you that GIS Cloud projects are not locked and you can update and change and manipulate them in any way at any time if necessary. So uh, as you see, this is a traffic sign inspection. We have our teams spread out around the city. They are making uh, inspections of our uh, signs. The, they can be either horizontal or vertical signs. So we want them to make inspection on their condition to know about how to repair them. We have predefined values for that to select from, uh, depending on uh, different uh, types of the signs that we have, their uh, inspection, how is their condition on, and any other information that is necessary for us to make any kind of repairs or maintenance to it. So we notice that we are missing some information so just to show you how quick it is to work with our form, let's add a couple of new fields. And they are appearing at the bottom. And you can choose between various different field types that we have listed here. Uh, of course, if you are interested in how to get started with your data collection project from scratch, we also have great materials on it. Uh, leave us a message, we can send it to you. But let's build up our survey a little bit more with some additional information. So we would like to know about traffic sign ID, ID number, and I would like to uh, have this field to be required because um, I don't want anybody to be able to send data without populating this field. And let's include one of our newest feature releases, unique value, and we will keep it as unique. So we don't have that kind of repeated values for the traffic sign ID because we presume that each of them has their own unique number. Uh, next, let's just add date and time for it as well. So we know when the inspection was made. And we will, uh, under the details, keep it as well a required field. You can choose between uh, just using date or time or include both date and times. And uh, let's keep it as a text for street name. And under the details, we will just check persistent and required. Um, persistent means that it will remember the latest entry when you re-enter a new submission. So if you are in the same street repeating the same value, this is a great feature to use. Um, okay, shall fine. we? Sorry, it saves time. Yeah, it saves a lot of time. Shall we pull it at the top of our survey, maybe? Why not? It yes. makes more sense. So you can see you can manipulate your form not just by adding fields, but you can rearrange the order of your fields as well. So you can just imagine this if you are using paper forms as a paper survey. Those are the questions that you have on your survey. and. Uh, now we have our field workers actually in need to send us the data through. So without further ado, let's do a screen share of my phone. I will just need to pair up my device so you guys can see it. So just bear with me for a second here. It usually takes just a couple of seconds. You probably already also noticed while I was editing the form that uh, I got that kind of message of making uh, automatic save to it. So that's a great option to know that you don't actually need to. You don't have to manually save. It basically does it for you. So exactly a great tip if you if you actually save your project first and then go to edit it, um, you're going to save yourself some trouble maybe. Yeah, thanks Barbs. It's it's really <laughs> hard for me to sometimes navigate through the, the phone and, and talk at the same time, sorry. Uh, so uh, here it is, my mobile data collection. You probably already have it downloaded on your phones, but mobile data collection, once you are logged in, various options to choose from. Of course, the most important is our survey that we are working on that you need to choose. But before we access the project and collect the data, here is our latest tracking option. 
So you, pro you, you see that I already have it turned on. So when the uh, tracking location is on, on the device, and you are in the application, the field collector will be tracked. It's his movement and, uh, okay. Uh, the movement of the collector will be recorded. If a collector turns off the location tracking, we will no longer be tracking him. And also if you close the device, uh, the application on your device, of course, in that case, you will also not be tracking you. When the tracking will happen if you are within the application or the application is working in the background. Exactly. So you can even just kind of Love. turn off your screen and put it in your pocket and it will still track your movements. And yes. you still have um, a very simple way to turn off the tracking. So it's always um, kind of in the hands of the person being tracked to turn off the tracking feature if, you know, if they don't want to be tracked for some reason, you know, maybe you don't want to, of course, track your workers over the weekend or something like that. So they're always in, in that control. Exactly. So let's uh, click on the form. Like I said, unfortunately, we are not able to track our moments and, and do this kind of live webinar. So we did collect some information in advance uh, to show you, but let's show you just quickly uh, to um, collect some imaginary uh, locations for our signs. Let's use the vertical ones, type in the values. You can see our survey popping up uh, and giving us additional questions as we go. This is for because of our dependencies. So if you would like to manipulate and manage your uh, survey in a way where you have some sort of dependent questions that will open up depending on the previous answer, then that's something that you can use. Once the form is collect, uh, populated, you just hit send, data goes through queue. Uh, pretty simple. Pretty simple, that's it, data is sent. So that's, that's it. And if we open up our project, we will basically see all the data that, that is being collected, the data that is being sent and updated by our field workers. I believe that this is the latest one that I just collected. And here's exactly. the proof of it. <laughs> so yeah, this is, like I said, pretty fast live data coming through that gives you that uh, fast reaction time on any data that's being collected. So Barbara and I was were out in the field earlier today. We collected all these points and we tested out the tracking option as well. So uh, Barbara, maybe you can switch us to that other interesting side of of course, let's Thanks. get started. So as you know, um, as you can see here, actually, um, we did uh, collect a few points in advance just so you can see it, everything in action and not just look at the blank map. But of course, the main point of our webinar today and what we wanted to show you is how you can now take this information and actually get more data out of it. And how do we do that? Well, we do this through the a tracking option that we implemented and that Antonia just now turned on. So to view the tracking information, to see where our field worker was collecting the data, what route they took, um, how long it took them, or maybe how, how many kilometers they covered, um, we can go to our uh, web, uh, track web application. And every application is custom, so you will of course only see um, the users that uh, you add that are um, kind of part, part, part of, of your the... organization, let's call it like that, not necessarily within your manager. Um, but let's go ahead and open it up and see uh, the information um, in our track application. Um, what you'll see at the start is actually the just the default map as a base map. But of course, one of the key things is that we are able to add um, custom base maps and the mobile data collection um, map that we just created being one of them. So let's just first take a look at the web track web application and see what kind of information we can see here, what kind of information we can get. 
Um, of course, the main thing is the map where you see all of the all of the different icons and diff different users or different units that are being tracked. This can, of course, be just their mobile phones, or if you do want to include, um, of course, GNSS units for vehicles and other sensors, they will be visible in the same way as well. Um, on the left here, we have a full list of all the users that we added to our application that we can track and monitor. And you can even see uh, the difference between those that are active and those that are stopped. Um, maybe you saw, but um, Antonia's uh, uh, user account, the unit uh, was actually active here just a few seconds ago. Uh, so maybe Antonia, you can also turn it on yeah. so we can take a look. But of course you can see all of the, the rest of the users. And this is something that you can manage and change. Um, we can see it here. Uh, we can manage and change what we're seeing. So if you want to change the icon based on what vehicle they're using, or if you want to change the name, or if you want to group them, um, add different labels to them. So that's all something you can do for basically easier um, organizing of your data. Um, of course, as we mentioned, the benefit of having this system integrated with the rest of the GIS cloud applications is that you can not just use our default uh, base map, as you can see it here, this one is the open street one. Um, you can use your own maps that you created. So we can go ahead and click on maps and just take a look and see where our traffic sign inspection is. So that's this one. So let's go ahead and open it up. And let's see our data um, on the map and not just, of course, our data, but also our uh, units that we are tracking. So this essentially gives you the context for everything that you're collecting. So you know um, who the closest crew member is for a particular area, if maybe you get a new um, new traffic sign here that's in poor condition that you need to maybe send someone over to fix it, you can see, okay, um, this truck over here is the closest to this one, so we're gonna send them. So it cuts down on your decision times, it cuts down on your costs of just driving around because you have the closest person there. Of course, um, we not only have their exact current location, so in cases where they are um, just kind of driving around, you will see their, um, their icons here move around on the map. But sometimes you don't necessarily need just the live information. You also want to see their history. So what route did they take that day or the last month or anything like that? Well, for that in particular, we have what's called here a history. So let's take a look at maybe this one over here and we can examine their history and the route they took today. Um, you can determine for which time interval you're getting this information. So not just the graph here below, but also you see that their path is also visible on the map itself. And you can see that as I'm kind of moving around, uh, we can see their movement on the map. Um, you'll notice here that you can also take different parameters into account when you're creating this graph. Now, this is something that you can definitely um, change and modify. So it's not just these two that are available. You can, in fact, manage all the different parameters that are available um, for visualizing in uh, the track application, whether that's choosing what information is visible here in the info tool, which is here, um, or actually unit list is um, over here on the left, or map unit marker, which is visible on the map. And for graph, of course, we have the parameters below. Um, you will notice that some of these parameters, they won't, of course, be available with just a phone. Um, you won't have um, motion sense or a rather a uh, fuel probe or a fuel level or anything like that with a mobile phone. But if you do have those additional sensors, you can rest assured that there is support for that. So you can definitely add that as an additional uh, information that you're tracking. 
Sometimes it's not just about seeing their route and their history. Um, you might want to be alerted in real time when, let's say, a user gets to a certain location or maybe when a user starts speeding. So for that and for some other um, uh, use cases, we actually have, of course, more features available in the Track Web application, and you can see them here on the left. Now we'll take you through all of those and let's get actually started from the bottom up. So let's start with our POI, so place of interest. Um, POI is a very simple tool that allows you to, let's say, set up geofencing, or as we mentioned, if you want to set up a notification for when a user passes through a certain checkpoint, this is the place to do it. So you can either set up POIs from uh, existing later layers. So if you have an existing data source that you want to use, you can do that or you can create a completely new group. So let's say, let's call this one checkpoints. And within that group, you can then create those places of interest, um, which can be either a polygon or a point. So depending on, of course, what kind of uh, checkpoint, let's, let's say in this case you're working with, is it just a specific location? Is it a larger area that maybe they're not able, not, um, uh, they shouldn't access? Uh, so what we need to do is we can name it. So let's call this one checkpoint one. And this will and basically trigger some sort of uh, alert for us to, to know what's going on or Exactly. So first we need to set up a point. So in this case, let's say on this crossroads, um, once we set up this point, we can then set up an alert in our next, our next session. So let's see, that's it. Our point is here and that's kind of the buffer. So if a user will enter this area, we can set up an alert for that. Um, of course, instead of the point, you can also use a polygon. So if you'd prefer to just kind of draw on the map like this, you can do that as well. So that's also an option. But let's see how we can actually set up the alerts. So alerts can be created from different things. Place of interest or POI is just one of those. One of those. Um, alerts are essentially uh, live notifications or emails that you can receive when something happens. And what that something is, is defined by you, of course. So this can be anything from speeding, um, entering a checkpoint, for example, like you can see here, a POI alert, or for example, if um, a maintenance is due for one of your units. So if you have like registration, you know, one, once a year, you can get alerted um, a day in advance or however many days you set it up. Um, and for example, let's set up here a new alert that will be, let's say a speeding one, so that we know if someone is speeding. We'll call this one speeding alert. If you want, you can um, set up a default email to which uh, to which this notification is sent. For example, some users uh, prefer to send the notification to the driver themselves so that they know, hey, you've been speeding. Uh, maybe you should uh, let go of the gas pedal a bit. Uh, we can also set uh, how, how many times we will check this and how many, let's say every 15 minutes and how many times it will refresh as well. You can choose for which unit you are um, setting up this alert. So maybe you want to uh, set up this alert for just one specific user. So maybe let's say we want to set up an alert for Antonia to see when she's speeding. Or of course you can set up the same thing for all of the units. If you have set up labels, you can also set up uh, the alert for a specific label as well. You can also choose the dates or rather when you don't want to check. So for example, if you're not checking, checking the weekend and you can define time of day. So let's say before between 6.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. we're checking to see if they're speeding. And this is where we define what constitutes as speeding. So let's say if she goes over 80 kilometers an hour. That sounds about right for the city, yeah. Yeah. 
so we can create that alert. And there we go. So now we have a new alert. So now if she's speeding, um, we will be notified. I will get a ticket from you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No police necessary. You have us. And of course, last but not least, um, one of the more powerful tools that are actually available here in the track application is our reporting. So reports basically um, collate and give you information on all of the units that you have on different statistics that you would like to get. So for example, how many kilometers a user has covered if you're maybe paying them per uh, based on mileage um, so that you can make sure that they're not like driving around just around the block. Uh, or if you need to know how long they've spent driving because you're paying them by hour. So those are all kind of different information that you can pull from, uh, pull from the track application. And of course, you can see a couple of different ones here. So poor report, driver status and unit status are very specific, they're kind of mostly predefined where, for example, for the POI report, you simply define which place of interest you would like to get the information about. So when someone entered, when someone exited, how long they were there. Uh, but one of the more powerful ones is the simple standard one because it allows you to uh, fully customize the report that you're receiving. And this is really a very powerful tool. So how do we set it up? Well, first, of course, we uh, set up uh, the units. So let's say we want to choose all of the units. We want to get a full report on, any, on everything. Um, you can choose how often this report uh, is generated. So for example, if you need to pull this information out, let's say once a week or once a month, you can set that up here. Um, of course, we set up the start date and the end date. Let's see maybe this week how we went. And again, um, our time as well, same as it was previously. And now this is the kind of main tool is where you select your custom parameters. So you can see that there's really a lot to choose from. And you can even have uh, templates for the reports. Uh, you'll notice that for some of these, uh, some of these parameters, you do need to have additional sensors. Um, but even if you're just using the mobile phone, you still have a lot of information that you can pull from this, you know maximum speed, whether they drove over, over speed limit, what did we say? We, say, we said 80, um, the Four address, so. POI. So a lot of information that you can pull even just if you're using your phone. So there we go. Um, if you want, you can give the report an alternative name, uh, send an email, show only the summary. Once you've set everything up, you can simply create a report and it takes a few seconds for it to generate. Of course, it depends on um, how many units you have, how many parameters you've set up. So it needs to collate all of that. Yeah. Of course, the time frame. If you've set it up for a month, it will take a while. So let's maybe check check out one of our finished ones. This is uh, essentially how many kilometers we went through today. So that's that should be uh, useful to see. And there we go. So uh, those two are essentially our devices, and we covered two kilometers today. Wow. So good, good work. For us. <laughs> Excellent. OK, so of course, the web application is not the only one that um, we, we have. We uh, mentioned that we also created the mobile track application, which will allow you to, of course, see the map and all of the um, all of the users that are on your map. So maybe Antonia, if you wouldn't mind showing us how it would look like if you're the manager, but you only have your phone with you. Exactly, so let's uh, try to uh, pair up my phone again with the uh, screen share so you can check it out. As Barbara said, we have a mobile application for your admin use as well and Let's jump on it just a second to show you how you can utilize this uh, from your uh, from field as well. So the application is called track. Once uh, you select it, of course, I'm already logged in. 
So I'm able to go over all of the devices that are registered for units for uh, my um, organization. Let's open up uh, again, Barbara. And if we click on today's history, we will be able to see the route that she took. You can see the begin, begin, end, distance, drive time, everything that we showed you on the web application as well, but accessible from field if you have the need for it. Exactly. So at the end, our question really is, why GIS Cloud? So why um, our tracking application instead of any other? Well, these are kind of the main uh, key reasons that we uh, that we wanted to bring forward today. The first one is, of course, plug and play. And that, I think, is really the crucial part because this app eliminates the need for expensive new hardware. You don't have to have the know-how. You don't have to... Um, doesn't have to cost a lot of money to set all of this up and it's integrated into our existing app so if you have if you're using data collection you're already pretty much set all you need to do is just kind of update the application because exactly. it's and in the newest the release <laughs> and that's pretty much it you can have fleet management set up in half a day not even that so pretty simple and straightforward um, even if you already have a fleet management system, you can easily then expand this to tracking personnel. So if you're already, let's say, tracking vehicles, you can use this tool to track people because it might, maybe uh, you are somewhere where the vehicles cannot go through, you know, it's a forest or it's um, a tree fell uh, in, on, the, on the street. Um, and that's usually where the tracking stops. So if you can go, with the vehicle, that's it. But not if your main device that's tracking is your phone because you always have your phone with you. Um, GS Cloud Track also allows you to use your existing data and leverage the power of the rest of the platform. So all of the other applications um, that we have from Map Editor, Map Viewer, Portal, so they all are all kind of combine. It's not just our data collection and the track, which is not something that a lot of other fleet management solutions have, like supporting uh, supporting applications or supporting external data. I mean, even so, overlaying the existing data that fuel crew is taking exactly. with routes. So exactly, you have that piece of information which wouldn't be possible if if you're not tracking their phones as well. And you don't have to have three separate tools to do that because GS Cloud does all of that. Um, and it does it by using kind of our most powerful map engine that supports the rest of our applications. Um, but of course, uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Uh, so maybe now would be a good time for our q and you, you can see we spoke for a lot of a lot of time. So maybe we can see uh, what you guys have yeah, to say. Yeah, we are quite excited about this application. So it, it took, so, took us a little bit longer than it usually does. But uh, yeah, let's let's go through the questions. Uh, OK, does uh, GS Cloud is a free app or paid for users? Yeah, so GS Cloud in general is a paid application. So GS Cloud in general is a platform and upon that we have several different applications available depending on what you actually need to use you would need to have a paid subscription for it of course we do offer a premium trial that enables you to test out everything as you would use it as a commercial user so you can pretty much see if everything fits your needs and if we are a good match for your projects. And of course, that goes uh, for the track application as well. Um, specifically, we do have our, our early access until um, April the 1st. So if you are interested in trying it out, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd be happy to set you up with uh, your own track application so you can see how easy it is to set up. You can see how it works and you can see that you, know, you can get benefits out of it like right away. Exactly. Okay, let's see if we have any additional questions. There was an anonymous question, but I, I think maybe they, they started <laughs> writing the question and then they gave up. 
Okay, in, in any case, uh, like uh, Barbara mentioned, if you would like to give this a try, we do have early access. You can reach out to us, we can set you up and get you started with, with the evaluation. Um, I can see that you all paid so much attention to what we were saying, so you're just speechless now. You don't have any questions. The good thing is that even if you are maybe shy in asking the question right now, or maybe speechless out of words because <laughs> of how amazing this is, uh, you can always reach out to us at any time um, through either our emails or um, our chat box on our uh, on our uh, web. So we're here to answer any track questions that you might have. Exactly. All clear, okay. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Okay. Okay, well, in that case, I think if you guys don't have any, have any um, other questions, of course, um, as we mentioned, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you would like to try it out. Uh, we'd be happy to set it up for you. Um, thank you very much again for joining our webinar. We hope uh, you found it very useful. And as we mentioned, uh, as Antonia mentioned, there will be a recording. So if you want to maybe review some things or if you want to share it with a colleague, um, it will be up on our blog in probably tomorrow, Yeah, actually. So yeah, um, thank you again. And have a nice rest of your day. Antonia, any last words? I think that we covered everything. So thank you so much, guys. And until next time, I suppose, <laughs> we'll, we'll continue with our amazing new uh, content as well. So stay tuned, as always. Take care. <laughs>